brownie crew uh, girls night out or not guys night out guys night out we have the shotguns in the back or something. Uh, <laughs> having fun after so get some ideas and this is a uh, trending this is a big big deal right now a miniature garden kind of stuff uh, you know brightly lit room or near the window um, it doesn't necessarily have to be direct light. Direct light means you can actually see the disk of the sun from there. You know? That can be real hot. It doesn't necessarily have to be that bright. But bright filtered light, uh, you know, generally in indoors it's going to be a filtered light situation of some kind. But uh, these are our plants that require, you know, higher light. Uh, so if you've got that, you know, that's great. Um, there's kind of a, a loose rule in house plants. If it's got bright green leaves, you know, like these do, they generally needs it, it needs higher light. And if they have dark green leaves, and they can tolerate a little less, because most of us don't have the highlight situation that is required for these plants. Or if you do, maybe that's not a good spot for you to keep a plant because you have furniture there or, or heater or whatever. And so it, it's often difficult to find, uh, you know, a spot to put these highlight plants. So if you don't. That we can go with something lower light. Let's see, start with this. This is a goose lily right here. That's a phylum. That can require that can live in uh, medium light, which is what most of us have. Perfectly happy. There's a lot of plants that are very happy in the medium light range. Um, the more light they get, the better they do flower. Anything that flowers does need light in order to flower. Okay, so if you have something like African violets, anthurium, here's some, uh, this is anthurium right here. That's what I got here. I've got some So these are our plants that because they flower, and you probably bought them for the flower, uh, you do want to give them plenty of light. Um, so that they'll you know, stay healthy and keep flowering for you. Uh, another one is, uh, I have an African violet in here. Bright filtered light for an African violet. These, uh, these are some of my favorites. So it's just, I, I love African violets. They come in every color you can think of. Just beautiful. Some of them are double, some are single. They have, some of them have rough new caps. Is the cyclamen easy to transplant? Yes. Um, most house plants you can put in just regular potting soil. This is one of them. Uh, generally, the flowering ones. Um, very happy in potting soil. So uh, the main thing with uh, the pots that I'm going to go over this a little more in, in, a, in a bit is uh, the size of the pot. It's not going too big when you're planting things indoors. Yes, ma'am. If they're getting real late. Um, either it's just trying to grow a little bit bigger, but it seems to be a lack of light. And so uh, you'll see this in, in different types of house plants when there's not quite enough light, they'll sort of stretch out, um, put more energy into growing the stem rather than the leaves, so that they can try to get closer to the light source. You'll see uh, on, on plants that have leaves along the stem, you'll notice that it has a stretched look, uh, as if uh, you know, the, the leaves are farther apart. So it's putting more energy into the stem and the leaves. It's kind of saying, oh, it could use a little more light. So, and sometimes it's just a little bit more that it needs. Fertilizer? Yes. Ooh, I forgot to bring fertilizers up here. <laughs> Generally, when you're fertilizing the plants, you're going you're gonna to be using a, a liquid fertilizer. Um, uh, really easy to find uh, fertilizers that uh, you know, are, are good for house plants. Uh, I think we carry a number of them in the store. Uh, we have a couple uh, from Fox Farm that I use myself. I love them. They, they work great. Um, African Violet Food, actually, is, uh, is another one that I use. African Violet Food, you know, like, remember the Schultz? Schultz went out of business last year. Sorry, you were probably wondering why you couldn't find it. That's why. <laughs> uh, but there are some other brands that are uh, equivalent to it. Uh, African Violet Food makes a very good all-purpose plant food for houseplants. It actually does. So uh, that's what I use on my cyclamen. I'll either use that or the box farm. I use both in different places. And they, they both work great. Do you, you think some blooming? It's very important with your flowering plants. You must fertilize. I know sometimes it's easy to forget, but if 
you if you have a flowering plant, you've got to fertilize uh, so that they can keep blooming. And uh, not fish fertilizer, you know, it's got a little bit of nitrogen, it's not the phosphorus. Uh, the phosphorus is the part you need for the flowers. Did you have a question? Yeah, um, so can you use the African violet uh, fertilizer for, for those plants? Do you use it on non-flowering plants? Yes. Oh, okay. The question was, uh, can you use the African violet fertilizer on non-flowering plants? Yes. That's, that's why I like it. It's a, it's a good all-purpose food. Um, a little extra phosphorus will not hurt a non-flowering plant <laughs> at all. So yeah, it's a great all-purpose food uh, to use. Yes? What's the brand name? Um, what's the brand name? Uh, there's, a, there's a few of them. There's Bone Eye and there's uh, Fertilome. Uh, yeah, Fertilome is one that you can often find. It's a, it's a fairly good brand. Um, be careful about certain brands. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have to say it. No, I, I've never seen a plant survive this stuff. I'm sorry, it's too high a salt. That's the only one that I, I've just never had a good experience with. Yes, sir. Uh, are you getting salt burn up? Uh, is salt burn up real bad? Finding what works for you, and everybody, the way they are, the way they do this, the way they do that, is going to be a little different. So, you know, there's going to be some differences, but, you know, that's just my experience. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll talk a little bit about salt burn. And uh, you see this. Is you'll notice that, that they'll get on the very tips, it'll start turning black and yellow. Um, this one you don't see it on yet, but you'll, you'll see this almost all the time. And that black and yellow on the very tips is actually sulfur. It's, it's generally just from the salts that are in um, uh, the, the, the water. And then there generally are a little bit of salt in, in most of the liquid fertilizers as well. Not all, but most. Uh, and so it, over time it kind of builds up in the leaf and it always gets deposited at the very end of the leaf and that's what causes that burn uh, and so you know, over time it builds up so that's why you just kind of if, if you notice that it's building up faster than usual usually that means either the water or the fertilizer is a little higher in salt than usual yes on the side um, if it's on the side, kind of depends on which uh, plant it is. Um, it can be it can be an overwatering issue, or it can be an under. It can be both. Depend it, it generally depends on the plant. Uh, like for example, in philodendrons like this one, it's probably uh, a little underwatering. But uh, if it's a say a dracaena, it's generally too much water, too frequent. Um, so it can kind of go both ways, and it kind of depends on how it goes the site. Kind of have to see it. Um, okay, so uh, philodendron is one of those uh, medium light plants. You don't want to put it in the dark, but uh, you just want to kind of keep it, you know, give it some light, but it doesn't necessarily have to be right in the window. So it's a really good, versatile plant. Uh, this one is one you don't see around very often. It's called autumn. The new leaves come out in that sort of um, fall color, like a fallen leaf. Uh, very pretty. Um, yeah, where it kind of sends out like an arm and it grows more, yeah, 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 it kind of grows like this thing, and when it kind of creates these rosettes. And then, uh, uh pothos. Is it pothos? Um, there's actually a philodendron that looks a lot like it. Oh, yeah. And I don't have one that's put right next to it, but I do down in the store. And uh, when you see them next to each other, it's like, oh, yeah, you can kind of see the difference. Uh, the main, the easiest way to look between a, a pulsos and a philodendron is that the pulsos has a heart-shaped leaf. That's, that's the easiest way to tell them apart. Um, the reason that the pulsos is a little fluffier, when you see a 
grown plant, it kind of stands up a little more. It's real fluffy compared to the, the philodendron, which tends to lie a little flatter. Um, both of them are very good plants, been around for a very long time. They can take a lot of different light situations, so they're both great plants. Um, this can take very low light. Uh, it'll grow slow, more slowly in lower light. Uh, so if you want your plant to grow more and get bigger, kind of move it closer to the window. But it can survive just fine in very low light. So this is a great one to go to when you've got that tough spot that you would really like some green in here. Another one, this is one you don't see around every day. This is a peperomia. And this particular type um, can take a little light. So, real pretty. A little more upright. Um, so many different types of peperomia. A lot of them have a very interesting look. Especially like here is easy plant. This is another one that can take very low light. One of the best that you can find if you have a dim situation. Um, They'll get maybe two, three feet tall at the most, and they'll they'll suffer up and get wider. If they get too big for you, you know you don't want to pop that big. You know, it's something you can divide very easily. Just cut the root ball in half or into pieces. This is called Zizi plant, and it's got a funny name like Zams of something, Zamafolia, or something like that. <laughs> and so, it, if you can walk in any garden center that sells this, and if you ask for ZZ plant, the letter Z, the letter Z, they'll know what you're talking about. This is what everybody calls it, ZZ plant. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to talk a little bit about um, potting. <laughs> um, basically, with house plants, because they're indoors, the soil doesn't dry out as fast. They don't have sun and the wind beating down on that, that uh, soil all the time. And the plants, they don't have the metabolism that the outdoor plants have because they get less light and so they're not sucking up water nearly as fast. So the, the, the soil has a tendency to stay a little too wet. And what that will cause is uh, you see root rot, you'll see uh, signs of overwatering on your plant, you know, leaves turning yellow, things like that. So what we do is we keep them in smaller pots. Normally outside, you know, we always say bigger pots. Bigger pots do better outside, right? The bigger the better. But inside, we actually go the other way around. The smaller is better. Give them a tight shoe so that the soil doesn't stay so wet. It gives it better air circulation and dries out a little faster. So when you do a pot, you know, there comes a point where it does need a bigger pot. It gets real root bound and roots are spiraling around coming out the drainage holes. So you know, just go up a couple of inches, four at the most from the pot that you're taking it from so that you don't have it swimming in soil because that's when we start having issues with uh, dye. So, let's see what else is we... All right, this one right here has some growing in popularity. This is an orchid. I want to talk about this one because orchids have become Kind of a hot commodity over the past couple of years. And uh, just about everyone has one. If you didn't buy one, someone bought it for you, right? Yes. <laughs> so you all bought one. So generally what ends up happening is you get one and you have no idea what to do with it. And you're like, oh, these are really, really exotic plants and I'm going to kill it for sure and then you come in here. <laughs> so basically, this isn't something to be afraid of. They're, they're a little bit different than other plants. But it's nothing, uh, you know, it, nothing to get uh, too worried about. Uh, mainly just uh, making sure that the, the roots get plenty of airflow. They are actually epiphytes. They grow on trees. And so the roots are used to being a little more exposed to the air, not buried in the soil. So we don't, we don't really pot these in soil generally. We put them in some kind of medium that has really good airflow. So something kind of chunky rather than uh, real fine like a normal potting soil. Think that there's actually a lot of mediums out there. Uh, the one that we're selling in the store right now uh, we have the orchid bark, and uh, really easy to, easy to use, great for beginners. You just uh, you know, soak the, take the whole pot and soak it in water you know, for a little while so that the bark can kind of absorb that water. And then it'll release that moisture slowly over time. And just your water in here just once or twice a week, nothing real special. So that's just the main thing, is just making sure that the roots get enough airflow. If they're packed in something really dense, they have a tendency to 
get waterlogged and start to rot. So the things are actually pretty easy. The other than that, the pear is just like any other flowering plant. Um, good filtered light and some fertilizer. And there's orchid fertilizers. I use the African violet roots. <laughs> After a while, you get tired of having a separate fertilizer for each kind of plant. You know what? It, it works. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. It's um, I've got one at home right now that is I left the, the old stem on, and it's got stems coming out along the old stem plus a new stem coming out and, and growing pretty quickly. So yeah, they, they'll they'll keep growing more stems. And another question I often get is, you can cut that stem. You can cut it part way back. You can cut it all the way back. You can leave the whole thing on there. There's not a really hard and fast rule. And if you really want to get into orchids, you know, really get into it, you know, then you start developing all these different techniques. But for the average home gardener, you don't have to worry, you're not going to kill it or keep it from blooming by trying one technique or the other. If, if it looks like the stem has died, then go ahead and cut it off, but generally they stay alive. Now there are different types of orchids. This is the most common, this is Phalaenopsis. This is the one you see almost everywhere. So you might be talking about a different kind. Yeah. Yes. What kind of light? Again, they do need good light. Some people have, have kind of assumed that, you know, it's a tropical flower, so therefore it must not need much light. You know, the tropical forest, real dense canopy, very little light gets to the bottom. These actually grow up in the branches of the trees so that they can get light. So yes, they do need good light. Again, it doesn't need to be direct where you're seeing the disk of the sun. You just need to have good filter lights. So, um, I think what I'll do is, uh, any, any other questions on those subjects? Yes? Uh -huh. Oh, that's a good one. Um, she said she's had trouble with ferns. And that is not uncommon in this area. The reason being is ferns, uh, they like humidity. It's just the fact. They, where they grow, they, they're used to getting a lot of fog and mist off the ocean or a lake somewhere. They just they love humidity. Um, here it's so arid. It's Arizona. You know, half the time we have no moisture in the air. It's like zero percent, right? So these these ferns can have a little bit of trouble with that. They're not getting. They, they end up just drying. Out. I find that the bigger ferns do better, or ferns that are grouped in with other plants. They kind of humidify each other, they kind of um, hold in moisture in the air a little bit better. And uh, so if you're having a little trouble, there are different ways to take care of it. A pebble tray uh, that you know water can evaporate out of, kind of humidify it. They do great in bathrooms. Um, they only require about medium light, so they don't have to have real bright, bright really. So that was a very good one to uh, <laughs> yeah, so there are, you're always going to have a few plants that seem a little finicky at first until you understand what their needs are. This is another good example of that. This is a ficus, a, a ficus benjamina. <coughs> and if any of you have ever taken one home, you probably remember the, the thing you remember most about is it got home and it dropped all its leaves, right? Or if you've ever tried to move one across the room, you ever done that? <laughs> Same thing, all the leaves fell off. Don't panic. Um, it's actually a, uh, a way to adapt to a new environment. Just drops all its old leaves and grows up new ones to uh, adapt to the new environment. So no big deal. It's, it's healthy. It's fine. It could, she's asking if it's dropping a lot of leaves and you haven't changed the environment. Um, one question to ask is: Has the environment changed somehow? Like maybe the season has changed? Have we just kind of gone into or out of monsoon season, um, has the heater started coming on more, you know, things like that can change the environment. You don't really think about it, but the plant notices, oh, it's more arid or it's more humid or it's hotter or something, and so it'll kind of drop all the leaves. Now, if it's dropping a lot of leaves, uh, uh, another thing can be lack of light. Like I said, they have high light plants, so that's another thing. But if, you, if it's been there for a while, it's been healthy, and then all of a sudden it starts dropping leaves, something did change. So it could be any number of things. But, uh, you know, kind of come, come in, we'll, we'll help you troubleshoot. Have you tried this? Have you, have you done that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn everything over to Laura. And she's going to take you to the fun part. <laughs> so anyway. Who's ready for a little barking? <laughs> so most of you are here because you saw the article or saw something on Facebook or somebody told you and you're thinking, wow, that sounds like a really easy, good idea. So a miniature garden, <laughs> technically if you're going to go into showing and competing, a miniature garden is to scale, much like your model railroads, you have your O gauge and you have your N gauge and whatever, I don't know, I'm not a railroader. But it's very particular as to size. We're going to loosen that up. We're not going to be a stickler about the scales. It doesn't matter here, we're just doing a small garden. So we're calling them miniature gardens or fairy gardens or a tabletop garden or whatever you want to call it kind of garden. The neat thing is, is you can put it anywhere you want. Think about where you want to put it. Do I want to put this on my desk? Do I want to put it on my kitchen table as a centerpiece? Do I want it in the office? Do I want it hanging on the wall in the bathroom? That's going to kind of determine your light factors. And as Ella brought up earlier, light is an important factor as to what kind of plants you can use. So if it's inside, outside, whatever, that's going to kind of set your palette as to the plants. So you've got an idea where you want to put it. What do you want to put <coughs> inside? Do you have a picnic basket? Do you have a pot that you like? Do you have something that's really special to you? An old pair of cowboy boots? I brought a pair of my old boots in. They're just too cute to throw away. Well, I thought this might make a cute little garden. You can see some succulents in it. I think I'm too loud. Yeah, okay. So anything you can plant in. The main thing is, is you got to be particular with your container as to what size of plants you're going to put in there. So something like this is pretty small, so I need to have something little. The other thing is I don't really have any drain holes in here. I could drill some holes in it if I wanted to, or I could put pebbles or something in the bottom that'll allow a place for the water to go and plant succulents or something pretty dry on top. So if I add just a little bit of water, it'll get a moist and as this evaporates, it'll keep that soil moist for three weeks maybe. So we're gonna start out with a container, and I don't know if you guys have a container you, you like particularly, but since this is easy to hold in my hand, I'm gonna kind of start with something like this. And like I said, you need your drainage. So if you don't have holes, you put something in the bottom where the water can collect keep the plants up higher out of it. So we'll fill it probably about to the ankle, the boot, and the top part will put soil in. Now, selecting your soil, again, depends on the type of plants. If you're going with succulents, you want to use a cactus mix or something with really good drainage. It's a chunky soil, got lots of gravel, with a little bit of fine particle in it. If you're going to go with something more like a leafy house plant, then you can use a house plant mix, an orchid mix, you can use an African violet mix or just general potting soil. But the thing is, you don't ever want to put dry soil in your pots. Dry soil doesn't hold water. It runs right past it and then you'll have pockets of, of air that are dry that will run the roots and you'll have pockets that are waterlogged. So we want to decide, is our soil good enough to use? If you grab a handful of that soil and squeeze in your hand, does it slide through your fingers? Or when you open your hand up, does it hold into a little ball? If it holds into the ball, it's perfect. If it slimes to your fingers, it's too wet, and when you open your hand, if it crumbles to pieces, it's too dry. Very easy rule of thumb. I'm going to come over here and have our trash can full of soil. So I'm going to grab a piece from the middle, and see I have it in my hand, and I'm going to squeeze it together. See how it's kind of holding shape, but kind of falling apart? Can everybody see that? It's a little dry. But over here on the end, where there was some moisture, see how I got it? It's holding shape. This is ideal to plant with. It's already moist, so when you get your plant started in there and you add your water at the end, it's going to suck that water in and kind of get nice and moisturized. So you've kind of got your soil started. Now for the fun part. We got our dirt, we got our container. What do we want to put in here? Well, I like the colors in here, kind of purpley, kind of pinkish or whatever. And I don't know, do I want to go cactus or do I want to go color? Just kind of take your pot or take your plants. You start putting it near things. Does this look pretty together? I don't know if I like that. I like the pink, but not really. We got kind of a purple here. Now that's kind of cute. This is an ornamental kale. Normally something like this is going to get very big. But notice how small the container is on this. 
What I would do to try to keep this smaller is maybe leave it in this container and just set the container into the soil without taking it out of the pot. It's going to constrict those roots quite a bit and it will slow the growth of this plant. It's not going to stop the growth. This is a dwarf plant. This is a regular plant, so it does want to grow. Slowing it down. You can trim it to keep it going a little slower or whatever. But I'm lazy. I don't want to do that much work. I want to go something in here that's really slow growing that can take the light sitting in my windowsill. It's going to get hot. It's going to be bright. And I want it to be slow. I'm going to go pokey guys. This kind of gives you a western look. Excuse me. Gives you a little bit of a western look. You've got your dry succulent. You can pick a couple different ones to fit in here. If you don't want to get poked, we've got succulents instead of cactus. Down here, I love this one. He's got lots of color, kind of shows up a little bit. So I'm going to put maybe one or two of these guys in. And again, if you want them to grow slower, leave them in their containers and we'll be restricting. Something like this is kind of slow growing anyway, so you could go ahead and pull it out of its container and set directly in the soil. I'm going to take, you kind of think of rules of one and three, you know, you want odd number items. Well, in this particular boot here, there's not a whole lot of room. But I think I can fit three of them in here pretty easily. So we're going to go with three a little bit different varieties and just kind of set them in there and see how they look. I like to put the tall one in the middle with something smaller on the ends or maybe something that would spill over the edge. So we have a nice little trio here. You can put these in and then after you set them in your soil, go ahead and backfill with some gravel on top and they'll kind of dress up the finishing touch. And if you really want to go all out, you can throw an ornament in there as well. And I think I brought a little horse. He has a broken leg. He doesn't want to stand up anymore. And my kids aren't home, so they don't play with him. So he would sit nicely if you were to just tuck him in with the dirt. Kind of dresses up and finishes kind of a cute little garden. And again, you can change it however you want. You don't have to go succulents. You don't have to go an old boot. You can determine if it has to go inside. Other things that grow nice outside, over here we've got the dwarf Alberta spruce. This would make a nice centerpiece along with a low juniper, vinca, or thyme in its winter color. In the summer, thyme will be bright green, and in the winter it turns a purple color. I think it's beautiful like this. These guys all kind of go nicely together in a nice big pot. You can fill a whole fairy village in there if you wanted. To keep the shapes a little bit nicer, don't feel like you can't go in there and nip away. Pruners are your best friend when it comes to little gardens. I like a tree that's got a little bit more limbs underneath it so that I can trim those around and have room for a picnic table or whatever. If I was in my yard, I'd put my picnic table under the shade tree. So trim it up like you would in your own house. Where did my handle go? All right, so this is our outside version. We talked about a few inside versions, and now we're going to go over a couple different little plants and then we'll break into groups. Once living moss, the moss is no longer alive. So if you were to put something like this outside, it will eventually fade and, and break off and you'll have the structure of the basket but most of the moss will go away. So to keep it looking green longer, keep it where it's protected so it doesn't dry out and get exposed to the weather. Inside we have succulents. These are not cold hardy succulents that come in here. So a sunny Right window, it can handle the direct light from the south facing window, not a problem. These guys can dry out really well. As a matter of fact, if they get too wet, they'll lose their bottom or interior leaves. So they'll look really leggy and it's spindly. Keeping these very dry. Something like this, you might water once every couple of weeks. If it's in a hot spot, two weeks. If it's in a not hot spot, once a month, maybe. They are very, they're good for those people who forgot to water their plants. If you're a doter, don't get these. If you like to water your plants, don't do these. If you don't like to water your plants, this is your plant. <laughs> and they can pick what they want to put in there. <laughs> Go ahead and just pick. Look at this one. That's the one. I have a daughter who's 21 now, who's my spitting image. I look at him now and I go, to be young and thin again. <laughs>
Lots of stuff in that one. Who, who did this one? I did. You did. Listen, That's really neat. Yeah. Together to do that one. We'll just have them put the tickets in. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. I did that way. That's that way we don't have to. Find you don't know which goes oh, which. Very cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now stand up and show us your wings. Okay. Has anybody not voted yet? Cool. <laughs> I have one. Oh, yeah, in the tall blue. Right, I've got it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.